Hey guys, so I have a story for you today and it is probably one of the stupidest things I've ever done but made for a good story. So let's get into it. Basically when I was a kid I used to do horse riding lessons every week and um, I absolutely adore horses and was like obsessed with them. I always wanted one of my own and the lady I got lessons off would always tell my parents that I couldn't go any further without buying my own horse. So. I think that was kind of bullshit in retrospect, but I was kind of like obsessed with the idea that I needed my own horse. So my parents didn't know much about horses and um, they are so expensive. So like rightly so, they didn't buy me one. They would always be like, oh, we'll get you one when you finish grade four or five or six or when your brother and sister get their peas or when, which is like their driver's permit or when you get your license so you can drive yourself to stable. So I was like, okay, no worries, whatever. So, when I finally got around to getting my driver's permit, so when I was 17 and I got my P-plates, which means that you can drive unsupervised, um, I was like, you know what, fuck this, it's about time I get my horse. And by this stage, from like grade 9 to grade 12, um, which is when you get your driving license, I hadn't really ridden much. I had kind of just like stopped doing lessons and only rode like when I had... Um, like the opportunity to so like pleasure riding nothing exciting nothing like I was very rusty at this stage when I was in grade 12 when I was 17 I had been not riding for a long time so I was like okay I'll I've got my own job I can like afford to like start buying stuff for this horse I can probably afford to keep it so I just start buying stuff I just decide you know what fuck it I'm gonna go out there and go get some horse stuff then maybe mum and dad will turn around and be like, hey, you've shown initiative and bought some horse stuff, we'll buy your horse. Like, this is the dumbest thing. <laughs> like, when I think about it now, I'm like, why? Why did I think that would happen? But I went out and I bought myself a saddle, a bridle, lunge whip, lunge lead. I bought uh, grooming kits. I bought everything I would need. I bought a new helmet. I bought new jods. Um, I was like, all ready. I had all the horse stuff. And I bought it all online, so it just started turning up. And my parents were like, what is going on here? Why is there so much horse stuff turning up? So I was like, well, I'm gonna buy myself a horse. To which they were kind of like, uh, okay, well, right, if you're gonna buy yourself a horse, go for it, then we're not buying you one. Rightly so. So at this point, I like used up all the money I had saved from working. So I was like, I can't afford to buy a horse now because the horses that I wanna buy are probably going to cost a lot of money because horses generally cost a lot of money so I was like okay where can I find a cheap horse and I remember I used to have this magazine as a kid and uh, they have a 1000 and under section in their magazine so I was like scouring through that and like highlighting pages and like looking for my dream horse and in the 1000 and under section you will only really find Horses that are unbroken, so they haven't been trained. Horses that are green broken, so they're only freshly trained. Horses that are very old. <laughs> horses that just want to be retired. And horses that are um, probably just not ideal. I have vices and are not that need a lot of work. So for someone who hasn't ridden for a couple of years and who, you know, has never owned a horse before, they're probably not the ones that you'd want to go for. So when I couldn't find one there, I started looking online. So there are a few sites like Horse Zone and Horse Yard, I think it's called. And you can find free to a good home horses there. Which, as you can imagine, you get what you pay for <laughs> most of the time. So I find this horse and the ad looks too good to be true. So I message the person and I'm like, hey, I'm really interested in your horse. They said it was a 16-2 thoroughbred. It was 17 years old, so same age as me at the time. And it was a broken in horse, but he hadn't been ridden for two years. So I'm like, well, he's trained. I'm just going to have to bring him back into work, which is not something I'd ever done before. So I message her and she's really keen um, because she wants someone who can look after him because he's getting really skinny. So she wants someone who can give him more attention and more food. So I'm like, okay, no worries. So I come and tell my parents and they are absolutely mortified that I've gone and done this. They did not think I would follow through with this at all because sometimes I get these ideas in my head and I just don't follow through with them. So um, 
Like one time I tried to dig a swimming pool in our yard and there was just like three little holes in the yard by the end of the week. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so basically I then am like, if you pay for the transport, I'll pay for my horse. And they were like, okay, that sounds fair enough. And I found someone to keep it for $25 a week and I was like, this is awesome. I'm gonna have my own horse. This is absolutely amazing. I can't even believe it. So I, <laughs> my parents agreed to pay for the transport, which is $600 to get him from uh, the other side of Sydney down to Newcastle. And I get him here and he's so, and he, my parents were like, let's, they were like, we'll pay for a couple weeks adjustment at a very fancy stable so that you can have people around you to give you advice on how to look after him so that you know what you're doing because I have never owned a horse before I only know the very basics so I was like okay fair enough that's a really good Christmas present thank you very much so basically <laughs> he arrives and he is skin and bones like he's skinny as hell and I am just ecstatic I can't wait I love him he's absolutely perfect he's amazing I named him Bruno and Honestly, he actually ended up working out really well. So I had him as a free lease to start with. So basically, she still owned him, but I was looking after him. And after three months, she said, okay, you can buy him off me. So because she was so happy with what I had done with him, she was like, you know what, just send me five bucks. So in the end, I ended up paying five bucks. And in that three months, he put on weight and I had saddle on him and we were doing work to get him into training. But yeah, he was... Um, he was a nice horse. He had like a really bad attitude sometimes. Like if you tried to put the saddle on him, he'd like puff up his stomach. So you'd have to like walk him around for ages to try and get it to do up. And then he would always kick you if you walked on the left side of him, which most equestrian people lead from the left side and like get on the horse from the left. So it proved pretty difficult, especially when to do his feet. So he was so much fun. <laughs> but no, he was a real sweetie um, and one time I had to change his name because I was too awkward to correct someone because they called him the wrong name. And uh, yeah, he ended up costing me way more money than $5 in the long run. So if you do watch this and you're like, hey, I'm going to get a $5 horse. It cost me $600 to transport him. I kept him at that fancy stable for six months and it was $170 a week, which I ended up paying for like after the first couple of weeks. Um, then I kept him somewhere else, which was 70 a week. Then I got him transported to my new house, which was in Victoria, and that was $800. And then he got colic at one stage, which was a $600 vet bill. And one night standing in the rain, trying to make sure he didn't like lay down all night <laughs> in the middle of winter on the Great Ocean Road. <laughs> so yeah, he was a $5 horse um, and he was amazing and I loved him to bits. And, I would do it all again if I could, but I wouldn't recommend <laughs> to a lot of people because it was really hard work. Um, but yeah, that's my story about my $5 horse. I hope you enjoyed it and subscribe because I've got a heap of dog videos coming out soon and a heap of like the worst kind of people videos and yeah.